Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. I was just printing out the documents that Mrs. Escamilla sent out to us, the agenda and everything to follow through with it. Give me one second. I'll be right with you. Oh. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll give it a few more minutes so that we can allow people to log into the meeting. I know that there's also people streaming from our YouTube channel um, and uh, watching the, the progress of the meeting on there as well. So I'd like to welcome all our viewers from the YouTube stream. Um, thank you for joining us. We'll get started in a few minutes. Why did you print that up? Why? Because it's <clears throat> Those members from the um, LSC, if you go to your calendar link, um, you will have access to the today's agenda and um, some of our paperwork for our transfers that we will need to um, motion for an approval. Um, we can discuss those um, after you all pull them or download them from the links provided to you on the calendar invite. I actually pr I printed mine. I'm just waiting for the last page to come out.
Shall we start? Yeah, I'm just receiving uh, messages of um, people trying to join the meeting. So I'm trying to make sure that I troubleshoot that right now. But we have the council, the council member present. That's what, that's what I'm asking. Because they can join in as they go along. But I want to know if the, the council members are in. Okay, so we were just um, trying to process people's request to join the meeting. I think we have more members that have uh, joined the meeting. I have one parent only. I know I had confirmation of a few more parents and um, one of our community members, Israel, who said he was going to join as well. Uh, maybe just a couple more minutes before we start to move forward. Two more minutes because we have seven, seven members already. They can join in after that. Are you saying you notice we have quorum, Mr. Asensio? We have Mr. San Gabriel, we have uh, Ms. Ruth Cruz, we have uh, myself, Ms. Malhas, Sabrina Wood Online, Amnoir Ahmad, and Anthony Escamilla Principal, they're present. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people present. Okay, well, if uh, we can call the meeting to order, it is, this meeting uh, will be uh, recorded by the way. Um, but as many of you noticed that uh, Google has changed their, their menu options, so it's kind of difficult now to find things. Yes. Very so, good idea uh, from Google at the last part of the, of the year to do that. 
So the meeting okay. comes. Uh, we, we're calling the meeting to order the local school council for Foreman High School on uh, June the eighth, uh, two thousand twenty-one. The time now is five twelve. Uh, roll call. Do we have present Ruaida Hamad? Lavanda Johnson, Jones, Mary McCann, Santa Montoya, Mr. Rufino, uh, yeah, Mr. Rufino San Gabriel, present. Yes. Okay, good. And uh, I saw Israel coming in. Miss Ruth Cruz. Mr. Chevrep? Yes. Ruth Cruz is present. Good. Fantastic. Ms. Malhas, present. Sabrina Woods, do we have her or did she Wonder. disconnect her? I'm She's here, present. present. All right, good, 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 good. Anwar Ahmad? Present. Good. And Mr. Anthony Escamilla? Present. Good. So we have one, two, three people missing um, from the parent, uh, four people missing from the parent reps. We still are waiting for Ruaida uh, Hafmad, Lawanda Jones, uh, Mary McCann, and Sandra Montoya. Ms. Jackson, can we proceed without them present? You can we proceed uh, with the meeting without them present? But you will need eight members for budget transfer. For budget transfer. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we can't eight. count the student. We can't count the student. So we have seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. She can't vote on budget okay. transfer. For, for the, uh, she can vote for the, for the uh, budget and uh, or the principal selection. Exactly. Okay. Good. Just to remind myself, because I always get that confused. Um, so I did so speak to um, Miss Ahmad. She said she was going to join us. Um, and Israel Flores just texted me saying he's joining us shortly. I'm hoping that uh, they continue to just log on as we proceed. I believe Mr. Flores is in attendance. Yes, he is in attendance. Mr. Flores, can you raise your hand or say present to confirm? Present. Yeah, he is present. Thank you. So let's go over the agenda for the day, read throughout it, throughout the, the document. Uh, let us know whether there are some amendments or things that have to be um, added to it at this moment, so that we can uh, consider a motion for approval. You have five minutes to do, to do that, please. There's one amendment we have to do in the agenda, and it is Mr. Asensio's last name. That first C should be eliminated from the document. And it should, it should be A-S-E-N-C-I-O to be correct and accurate. Anything else? Does anyone has a question or uh, a comment on the agenda for the day? 
I motion to approve the agenda with the necessary changes. I second. All those in favor? Raise your Aye. hand. Aye. 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 Thank you, Google, for making it impossible for me to work today. So just a, a point of clarification as we move towards the next um, agenda item. Uh, you know, as you recall, uh, Israel Flores was able to join us in our last meeting, but uh, uh, we had to uh, improvise um, him his connection to the meeting, so he was unable to um, complete the minutes, but we do have access to the video, which is found and linked on our website, uh, full access to um, our meeting, which are being transcribed for the sake of having minutes for our last meeting. Um, I just wanted to bring that to clarity. So we are moving those to be approved uh, for the next meeting, isn't it? Okay. So, uh, Ms. Jackson, should I move forward to number five? Yes, you can move forward. Okay. Uh, public participation? Have Emily Melby from um, State Representative Gazzardi's office joining us in, uh, on the meeting today. And um, Emily, please let me know if you need to share your screen. Um, I can stop sharing my screen, but I'd like to give you this opportunity to um, address the LSC with the information that you have to provide. Um, well, just, to well, you, me, just to give you a little bit of context, uh, uh, Emily, Emily's been a, a, a great help in providing uh, our school community with information and resources and has, uh, was a key uh, partner in uh, getting, um, getting us um, access to roughly 300 vaccines for our school community, which we've been trying to uh, get uh, people vaccinated. Um, that took place uh, about a week ago, June 2nd, but I'd like to give Emily the floor now. Thank you, Emily, for all your help. Of course, thank you, uh, Principal Escamilla, for inviting me here today. Um, I'm excited to share that the community vaccine clinic that we participated in with Foreman and Kelvin Park ensures the three high schools here in our district. We did vaccinate close to 250 individuals, which is wonderful, a great way to kick off the summer. It was great to see a lot of multi-generational families come together. There were a lot of students who came and got the vaccine, so it was a wonderful event. We will be back there on Wednesday, June 23rd for the second shot, so we'll make sure everyone's fully vaccinated. And we'll be doing some outreach spearheaded by our office to send reminder texts and phone calls to make sure everyone can come back to get their second shot and if they can't connect them with other local clinics. So we're happy to partner with that. We're definitely open to working with Foreman to do another smaller clinic, maybe in the fall when students are coming back to school, anything like that, we're totally open to collaborating on. Um, a few other kind of community updates here on our end. We just wrapped up the legislative session that adjourned on May 31st. So we're gonna be having a town hall this Thursday at 6 p.m. It's going to be virtual on Facebook Live, so anyone can tune in or watch it after the fact. After I kind of go through a few other announcements, I can drop the links and all the information here in the chat, and I'll email it all to the principal as well, so it can be shared with the community. Um, but that's this Thursday at 6. Um, otherwise, this Saturday, there's a few events that we will be at. The first is we're going to be hosting a coffee with the representative. So he will be at a local cafe here in the district, Sipping Turtle Cafe. And he'll be meeting with constituents kind of one-on-one -on -one and in smaller groups just to give folks a chance to meet with him informally, raise any questions they have about the legislative session that just happened or any other like community updates people have. We especially want to share this with our young people. I've shared this with all of our schools, After School Matters and other youth programs. We'd love for young people to come out and meet the representative in a local coffee shop, a more kind of relaxed environment. So I will drop information for that in the chat. That's this Saturday from like 10.30 to 
Um, and then also this Saturday, we'll be tabling at a resource fair at Metropolitan Family Services, kind of up here in our neck of the woods. That resource fair will have information on expungement, so getting things off your criminal record. Um, it will also have information about unemployment benefits and other types of resources like that. So that's again this Saturday at Metro Family Services over on Central, and we'll be tabling there from 9 a.m. to about 1 p.m. So we've had a lot happening this week, so I'm so happy to be able to jump on and share this all with everyone. Again, I'll drop sort of the links and flyers in the chat and share them with the principals to share with the LSC. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be out and about a lot this summer in the district, so if there's any events or as we get near the start of the school year again, I know we're wrapping up, but any type of um, school resource fairs or anything like that, our office is always super open to partnering. So I think that is everything, thank you. Thanks for your help. Um, and service to the community too. Uh, the next item will be no business, voting for, uh, nominating a voting for the new parent uh, chairperson. Um, I want to re uh, recall the names of the parents represented to see if they have a right to the meeting. Ida, Matt, Luanda Jones, Mary McCann, Sandra Montoya. Are any of these parents present in the meeting that we are not aware of? Thank you for the info. Yes, I do not I do not see them having joined us just yet. But I did um I did engage in a conversation with with uh, a parent that that uh, explained to me that they would be interested in serving as the chairperson. Um oh thank you, Emily. Um, I did speak with one of our uh, parent reps who shared with me her interest in serving as the chairperson. The only thing is I do not see her uh, having joined us just yet. Um, Mr. Asensio, um, would I be able to go back once uh, in continuation with our uh, public participation because I noticed that um, I do have some that just joined us and I'd like to give them a, a brief introduction and allow them to share a little bit about uh, their years of experience uh, working at the district or working for our district and then uh, uh, because uh, I'd like to share uh, or introduce her because she is joining our foreman um, community, our foreman staff uh, beginning in July. And I okay. noticed Mary McCann to join us. Would you be able to go yeah. back to public participation, Mr. Asensi? Let's go back to public participation for a couple of minutes. Thank you. Thank you. So um, as you all know, uh, the LSC had previously approved um, our budget moving forward, and we did express the um, the position of operation manager um, that is uh, needed here at Foreman. We did open the position and begin interviewing uh, quality candidates with key backgrounds in uh, budget management and project management uh, for different schools. And I'm happy to say that uh, after interviewing several quality candidates that we did uh, narrow it down to um, asking and making the offer to uh, Leticia Gonzalez um, as our project manager, as our operation manager moving forward here at Foreman. I think she'll be a great addition to our team um, and our administrative efforts to support the school, uh, specifically with the budget and other project management and endeavors that we're going to uh, charge her with uh, moving forward and at the start of the school year. So I'd like to give Leticia Gonzalez an opportunity to just share some background and int introduce herself. Thank you, Mr. Escamilla. Well, good afternoon. I'm Mrs. Gonzalez, and um, I am a product of Chicago Public Schools. I've been with the uh, working for the system since I was really young. 
um, each stage. So I've gone through different levels, um, and I know the heart you know, of Chicago Public Schools. I've worked with them long enough to uh, know about policy and procedure. Um, my major or my main strength is in budget. It's in management as well. And so I'm looking forward to meeting all of you and uh, to work together with you and to learn as a community. Um, that is my, my priority. Thank you, Mr. Smith. On behalf of the faculty of our, of our school, have the most warm a welcome to our building and our family. Gracias. Thank you very much. Any other person who wants to um, participate uh, as a public uh, participation now? Um, we also have, uh, well, actually, uh, Dr. Blake uh, has a different agenda item where he'll, he'll share more. So we can move on to, I don't see anyone else for public participation. We can move on to the next agenda item. Okay. So now, uh, Ms. Um, we, are, we, we need to nominate uh, and vote for a new parent chairperson. I don't know if we have enough parents present. I know that Ms. Pacan is present, and I know that Rufino San Gabriel is present. Again, is San, Santa Montoya available at the moment? Luanda Jones or Rabaira Ahmad? I do not see them on the call. I just see okay. uh, Mary McCann did uh, join us. Thank you, Mary, for joining us. Um, okay. I did. Um, I did uh, have a. Uh, a brief conversation with Mary, and she did express her interest in uh, serving as chairperson. So I'd like to uh, move uh, to to nominate Mary McCann as the chairperson of our local school council, and I would need someone to second that. I'll second. All those in favor, raise your hands. Hi. Hi. I'm counting votes. Hi. Give me a second. I believe Mary can also vote for herself. I can. Okay. I. Six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five. I lost count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven. Mr. San, San Gabriel raised his hand um, on the uh, okay. using the application feature with the hand. So eight votes in favor. Uh, I believe it's eight votes. Eight, eight votes. Eight votes in favor. Uh, the motion carries. Uh, welcome, Miss McCann, uh, Miss McCann, as our chairperson. Ms. McCann, you can take over from me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. And I apologize for being late. We had a, a difficult problem at my office, at my work, and so I apologize for being late. Um, is everybody able to hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, and so okay. we are on agenda item number six. Yes. Um, and you can... You, if you, there are any questions on how to proceed or move forward, please just pause and I'll try to assist. Okay. So um, we would be now at the um, 6B and be looking at principal selection process updates. 6B, yes, 6B. Yes, so that would be you, Mr. Asensio, or Ms. Durden Jackson. Ms. Durden Jackson uh, sent me a link with the public announcement uh, to advertise the position. Um, I haven't had the chance to open the document and print it out to read it uh, between uh, Ms. Malhas and I. Um, I will do that uh, either tomorrow or Thursday, and um, I will send you the link for that uh, that document so that you can uh, actually brainstorm uh, on things that can be uh, included in this announcement. Um, Ms. De Ms. Uh, Jackson also instructed us to advertise um, uh, this position once 
eight members or more of our local school councils have passed their principal election model. In addition to that, um, she also uh, it has requested that when we take the models, um, she wants you guys and I to put all the certificates together and send her an email with all those copies so that she have a has a record of, uh, of those certificates. But we need to take the, the, the training. And I was checking today, as I was coming into, to Ms. Malhas earlier today, uh, there is no uh, access to to the models. Uh, from where I from where I uh, went to search for the access, it says that there is no class or sections until June. We are on the first ten days of June, and still no access to that. So I believe that we can ask Ms. Jackson to enlighten us with uh, ways to go about this. Okay. So, um, let me see, let me, uh, let me try to pull up the, so what are you saying is that when you go into the training portal, you cannot log in? Yes, uh, in fact, when I, when I go to cps.edu and I search for local school council, as a member, I put my credentials and I cannot even log okay. in. Okay, okay, so. Yes. This is a third party training portal. So I see. the link that you need to use okay. is um, CPS LSC training portal dot com. CPS LSC portal training portal dot com. Oh, training portal. Let me see. Where's the chats? Okay, they didn't change everything. I'm gonna put it in the in the chat. Mm-hmm. Got it. Oh, Mr. And, Garcia's already put. Uh, so yes, it was put in the chat. I do know the previous numbers. Yes, there you go. Mr. Garcia's put it in there. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Um, I do know previous members uh have taken the training. Yes. I know Mr. Flores has taken the training because he took the training with uh, LSC specialists in our virtual training. So I've already provided the training overview. We just need everyone to send your training certificate okay. so that we can confirm that the LSC has been trained. Okay. So when you vote on the vacancy advertisement, and principal quality asked me, uh, has the LSE been trained and did they vote on the advertisement that I can say yes? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And once you vote on the vacancy advertisement, you will then, uh, as I guess the two teachers that are taking the leadership in this, uh, you will then send the vacancy advertisement to uh, Chief Lamont, okay. copy me on it so we can get it posted for the 10 day requirement. Okay. 10 school days. Remember that, guys. 10 school 10 days. 10 school days, yes. And then we are, and I also recommend before you adjourn that you schedule your organizational meeting because within those 10 school days, the LSC will have to organize again between July 1st and July 14th. July 1st and 14th. Could you explain again, I'm sorry, the, what those dates refer to? The organizational meeting. So every year, LSCs must reorganize mm -hmm. between the dates uh july 1st july 1st okay and july 14th mm -hmm. my recommendation is that before you all adjourn today that you will schedule that meeting so you will not have any lapse in the principal selection process okay okay because so, all officers have served a one-year term and you're more than welcome to appoint uh new off the same officers again but 
technically officers only have a one year term and that terms that term ends uh June thirtieth. The fiscal year. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So shall we look for dates for for those those two days? You you you're giving us a window of fourteen days to do that, isn't it? From the first to the fourteenth. It has to happen. So that's so, something you all could discuss before you adjourn, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, Ms. McCann, I, I believe yeah. that we need to add that to the to the agenda um, uh, today. That today's agenda to mm -hmm. include the organizational uh, meeting uh, for next school year. And yes. Some, and and also, I'm sorry. This is my last point. I do recommend that you all hold a special call meeting to vote on that advertisement so it can be posted. I apologize, my daughters. Sometimes they forget I'm in a meeting. Um, so uh, if you all hear any random laughing or anything. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, uh, my recommendation is that you also agree to hold a special call meeting to vote on the advertisement so we can get it posted up as soon as possible. OK, and so then the the special call meeting would be need to be separate um, from the additional meeting. It would actually be two. I mean, it will. I mean, that's up to you all. Okay. You all can decide just, uh, at the organizational meeting that you vote on the advertisement and move forth in July. Mm -hmm. uh, either way it go, it's up to the LSC. Okay. So if the LSC states that you know they do not want to try to do a special call meeting and just vote on the advertisement at the organizational meeting. That's fine because I do understand uh, everyone is busy and sometimes we can't come together. So if you all decide that the organizational meeting is the day that you want uh, to, uh, to vote on the advertisement as well as appoint your officers that can happen as well, uh, because we are uh, we are at the almost at the end of the school year, and I do understand uh, certain graduations and things like that, and certain things that uh, may prevent the LSC from having a quorum. Uh -huh. Okay. Um. So if we would take that point right now and insert it into the agenda, um, I think that would be useful. So we're basically looking at at um, looking for dates for an organizational meeting, which could also be um, the special call meeting to post the advertisement. May I make yes. a suggestion? Yeah. Because the organizational meeting is a special call meeting. Okay. May I make a suggestion? Yes. Okay. We are in our schools until the 23rd of June. Mm -hmm. Technically, we still have we still have close to 11 days, more or less, of school. Mm -hmm. How about having the organizational meeting? Um, how about having the organizational meeting on the 22nd of June, which is a Tuesday? two Tuesdays from today. That way you will give us enough time for those of you who haven't had the training on the principal election to complete that. Uh -huh. And when we come to the organization meeting, we are fully certified for that. And it will also give us ideas uh, at a time for us to brainstorm ideas or, or things that we can uh, include in the advertisement. That way when we come to the, when we come to the meeting, on the 22nd, we shall be work, that we shall be set by having a document that is a feasible document that we can present to, uh, to Dr. Lemon uh, for her approval and then uh, send a copy to, to Ms. Jackson and advertise after that. Okay. So, uh, chair, chair, chairperson, uh, yes. Mary McCann, can I have the floor to ask Veronica a question? Yes, you may. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Veronica, would we be able to host an organizational meeting on the 22nd, even though it's not officially the end of the school year, or is it, or no. is the window only July 1st through the 14th? According to the Illinois School Code, it's July 1st through the 14th. And the reason why you can't do that before those dates, because technically the term of the officers are not finished, uh, have not expired. How did I yeah. how did I miss that one? I'm sorry. I it's it's five forty five in the afternoon and my brain is not working. That's true. It's true. Yeah, no, but, no problem. It's good to get clarity for all of us on this. So we would be looking for a proposal of a date between June July first and July fourteenth. Um, okay. Yes. July first and the second is the holiday. And the fifth is the holiday. Um, I mean, technically, people are not available on the first or the second or the fifth because that's Fourth of July celebration. Some school starts on the sixth. Let's do it then on the sixth of July, which is a Tuesday as well. And it still gives us enough time for us to do what we have to do and be prepared for that meeting. Are you motioning? Are, we, are you yeah, motioning? Are you making a motion, Mr. Asensio? I uh, oh. I think that we should okay. make a motion. Yeah. Point of order, you all don't have to vote on this one. Just uh, agree. Just agree. Uh, agree. Uh, 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 let's see. Agree. Yes. Okay. What time yeah. are we thinking for the sex? Let's do it early. Since it's a video call, let's do it early. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. So officially, the holiday is the is the fifth. Yes. Um, I mean, I am sure that there are people who are out on the first and the second, but um, I. It, but the official holiday day is the fifth. The fifth. Um, yes. Are there other suggestions besides July sixth? Any of any of the of those other days are fine. Uh, I'm just I'm just looking at the calendar right now, and the 15th is on the following Thursday. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we push it a little bit further, I don't think that we will have time to to. I, I think we will have time to do everything, but we will be moving far too close to the deadline. Mm -hmm. So we want to be on a safe spot, you know, complying with the law by doing it after the first, and complying with the law doing it before the 15th. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any objections to the sixth? I don't object. I think the sixth is works for me. Okay. Anyone else? And and kind of maybe to look at that time of day then, um, if it should be a an evening meeting or if it should be a daytime meeting. Mr. Flores, do you have any suggestions on that? Uh, evenings work better for me. Um, sometime after 4.30, 4.30 and after would are always work best for me. Okay. Anyone else? I would go for 4.30 as well. I would agree with him. Mm -hmm. Ismael has what say you? Oh, I said that works well for me too. Okay. I could also do 4.30 on the 6th. That works for me as well. Thank you. I'm fine with 4.30. Thank you, Ms. Woods. I can translate for... Um, Mr. San Gabriel, San Gabriel, I know, uh, estás en la llamada. Estamos tratando de determinar una fecha para una reunión en julio, el, el, el 6 de julio, a las cuatro y media de la tarde. ¿Usted está disponible a ese tiempo? Señor San Gabriel. Es 
Paola. Este, no, la verdad no. El, el, 6, el 6 de julio a las 4 y media de la tarde. Dice usted que no. No. Okay. ¿Tiene una fecha o un tiempo, uh, mejor, un mejor horario para usted? So they, tal vez a las 5. Yeah. 5 uh, o'clock. Okay, Sorry. so just to summarize for everyone that doesn't speak Spanish, that um, for Mr. San Gabriel, it would be better 5 p.m. rather than 4.30. Uh, I can go for 5. I can as well. That works for me. Okay. Works okay. for me as well. Okay, it sounds like the it's consensus good. then is 5 p.m. on July 6th. Um, estamos eh, acordándonos de que sea el 6 de julio a las 5 p.m. Perfecto. Okay, is there any remaining um, point, Mr. Asensio or Ms. Dirt and Jackson, related to, to this? It's just in summary that we'll all be doing our training. Um, in order to be prepared, um, and then that will be this will be our the special call meeting. To recapitulate on, I believe what the process should be. Uh, in that organization meeting, we are going to uh, approve as well the ad or the position of principal for our school. Okay. But before we do that, we need to make sure that each member of our LSC is properly trained on the model of principal selection. Okay. Ms. Jackson has a very given has, has really given, given us the link to access this training. Uh, the only thing that we need to do is as soon as we get that certificate, you can send it to her directly or you can send it to me and I'll forward it to her. Whatever is better for you, I would suggest you send it to her because that will, that way there will be no, no confusion in the road. Uh, uh, but I'm open, you know, if you want to use me as a vehicle of uh, delivering the, the certificate, I'm fine with it. Uh, and once once we are properly trained and we go to the organizational meeting and we had already brought with us the, the brainstorm of, of the ad, by that time we should have more or less an idea on how it should look like. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Should we should we translate in Spanish? Um Yeah. Ok, Mr. San Gabriel, eh, estamos haciendo una, una, un resumen de lo que acaba de, de pasar. Estamos diciendo que el 6 de, de julio a las 5 de la tarde vamos a tener un, una reunión virtual para hacer eh, la reorganización del cuerpo que dirige el conjunto de la escuela. Uh, una vez que esta reunión se ve, estaríamos en la posibilidad de poder a proponer el anuncio de la, de, de la posición de la de la escuela como una posición abierta. Ahora, antes de hacer ese anuncio, todos los miembros tienen que haber tomado el entrenamiento para elegir al director en, en un link especial que se le va a hacer llegar a usted, a, a todos ustedes, a, quizá mañana, lo más probable es que mañana, si no esta noche, Uh, yo, me, yo, me, yo me comprometo a enviarle ese, ese enlace virtual para que usted pueda accesar a, a él y pueda este, hacer su entrenamiento. Una vez que tenga ese entrenamiento, tiene dos opciones. Está bien. Usted puede enviarle el documento directamente a la señora de Desen a Jackson uh, o me lo puede enviar a Yo lo recopilo y se lo envío a ella. Uh, antes de, hacer, antes de hacer el anuncio, tenemos que tener un entrenamiento. Eso no, no hay pregunta que valga. Legalmente tenemos que estar propiamente enterados para que nos den el visto bueno 
a la denuncia, uno le dice que esté completamente relajado, correctamente relajado, implantado y puesto en línea, ese documento va a pasar a las manos de la doctora Limón, que es la jefa de instrucción del área de nosotros. Ella lo aprueba, entonces ese, ese anuncio se publica por 10 días escolares consecutivos. Una vez esté ese anuncio eh, posteado por 10 días eh, consecutivos, entonces empieza el proceso de selección de los diferentes candidatos que vengan a solicitar a la posición. ¿Me entiende, no? Sí. Ok, perfecto. Uh, can I just ask one question? Yes. So I just wanted to make sure if everybody uh, can have an opportunity um, to ask for help if they need help accessing the training or does everybody know how to access the training uh, by going to, the, following the link, um, accessing a username and password and, and, and doing the training. It, uh, does, is everybody on the same page? Does anybody need help with any of that? Um, so that they can ask us for help here, or maybe we can make some sort of accommodation in the building if people need to uh, gain access to a computer, perhaps, anything like that where people need help accessing the training. I did notice that, uh, thank you, Veronica Bearden Jackson put her email in case anyone needs help or ask, has questions, but I just wanted to just double check in case anyone needs support. Nada más quiero preguntar si alguien necesita un tipo de ayuda uh, uh, para accesar el, el, el entrenamiento para el, el, el concilio escolar de la escuela. Si necesitan ayuda um, a conectarse a ese entrenamiento por la computadora, nada más se pueden comunicar conmigo o, o la señora Jackson por su correo electrónico que, que puso en el chat. Uh, si quieren hacer preguntas sobre el entrenamiento o necesitan ayuda, por favor, hablen ahora. I'm going to copy, I'm going to copy Ms. Jackson's email address because I'm thinking of writing a document with instructions on how to do these things. Is that okay? That way all the information will be in one document and it will expedite I think it will expedite the, the, the process. Yes, thank you. I think that would expedite the process. Okay. So, and so we would be looking for an email that would have all of the addresses um, and Ms. Veronica, or Ms. Veronica's address too, and the links and yes. the instructions. Yes. 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 That would okay. be it. Thank you. Okay. I I think that if I don't fall asleep before six o'clock in the afternoon today, I, I might be able to send the email today. Um, I just need my cup of coffee at the, you know, in about an hour. Okay, well, get your coffee and this is an important mission that you took on. So, thank you. Bye. Okay, bueno, muchas gracias porque vamos a recibir una, una, eh, una nota que tenga toda la información que necesitamos para poder cumplir eso de <coughs> entrar para poder recibir el, la capacitación. Uh, 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 incluso, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. McCann, uh, in addition to that, the note is going to be bilingual. It's going to be written in English and Spanish to facilitate uh, understanding amongst the members. Okay, perfect. Okay. okay. La notificación va a ser bilingüe. Should we move on then to um, 6C, yes. to the appointment yes. of parent vacancies? And that's yes. your point, Principal Escamilla? Yes. As you, as you all know, we have a parent vacancy and I'm I never stop trying to um, engage parents and have them participate uh, through our local school council. Um, and at this moment, I, I did engage a couple of families who um, are still thinking about it. I was being a little more optimistic because I thought I would be able to convince at least one one parent or one uh, yeah one parent from one of these families to participate. They're still uh, considering my 
my uh, request. So at this time, there are no uh, submissions of applications for any of our parent vacancies. Uh, como siempre estoy buscando ayuda de los padres para que participen en este concilio de, eh, escolar de la escuela. Uh, he hablado con diferentes familias para tratar de uh, convencerlos que participen con nosotros aquí en este concilio. Uh, y ahorita la, estas familias lo están pensando, uh, y, pero no han entregado su aplicación. So les traigo más información cuando se comuniquen estas familias conmigo. Pero ahorita no tenemos a nadie. Yes, Hello. We going back out? Um, yeah, I think we're going to go we're back out on the Zoom right now. And that's it for uh, uh, item 6C. Okay, thank you. Any questions on item 6C that we're still searching for other um, parents? Any question? Okay, let's move on then to 6D, um, we, which is fundraising proposals or propuestas para financiamiento um, and voting. Um, yes, so this would be with Dr. Blake. So the floor is yours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I was wondering, if, is this where I speak? Yes. Um, thank you all for allowing me to to speak this evening. Um, I know at the last meeting I mentioned a fundraiser for our school's GSA, which is the LGBTQ Club of Foreman. Um, we have been planning and organizing, and we are excited about doing this um, on Friday, June 8th. Um, we decided to move it up earlier in the day on and do it on a weekday so that we would have security already in the building. Um, and we wouldn't have to, to seek additional uh, support during the weekend and access to the building. Um, and so I'm asking for a, a vote for to get your all approval um, for this. Basically what we're gonna be doing is we will be, um, we'll have a suggested donation for entering. We will sell snacks and popcorn and drinks. Um, we will be streaming a couple of films um, for students to watch, but it'll be a time for uh, students to be able to, to get to experience uh, seeing each other before the end of the school year um, in a socially distant and safe environment um, while also getting to, to participate at the school. And so, um, yes, that's, that's what I have. And what's the time of the activity, Dr. Blake? Yes, yeah, so we're gonna um, start having students arrive. Um, so school ends on Fridays at 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. And so what we're gonna do is we have set a time of three o'clock and we will start the movies at 3.30. Um, and that way, depending on how long the, the film is, that ultimately gets decided. Right now, the options, I think the main option is Raya and the Last Dragon. Um, <laughs> for 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 the film um and so hopefully we should be done by 5 30 or 6. okay dr blake I, I know you you must fill out the uh fundraiser application have you been able to complete that and then would you be able to if you don't know this yet um, by the time you submit your application it will have to be on there but do you happen to know how much you I know that uh, it's upon donation for entry, but how much are you charging for the snacks and the drinks um, during the event? Yeah, as well as, so the snacks, the drinks, as well as any buttons or pens and things we're able to sell. Um, we're, con we're working on getting those um, created as well to sell. Everything's a dollar. Um, at the moment, we already have, um, $80 in donations um, and we're still getting a few more in and that's counting what we've spent on snacks and things as well. Do you mind sharing maybe the ultimate goal of what you hope to uh, ultimately uh, collect? And then um, what are some long-term goals of how you're planning to utilize the funds to, to go back into the, the club or uh, support students uh, during the school year? Uh, yes, so um, 
Okay, so the, the purpose of the funding and why we're doing this fundraiser is we're hoping to not only be able to um, create memorabilia, school pride, um, things that the GSA can wear and represent um, the LGBTQ club, but also to be able to set money aside for projects for next year. Um, next year, we're hoping to be able to launch some initiatives around the school. Um, and this includes partnering up with all of the initiatives regarding creating murals um, or other ideas for visibility and for, um, you know, the school community. And so we're hoping that any money we can raise can, can continue to support those endeavors um, and moving forward. I think I answered the question. Sorry, I apologize. There's more going on behind me. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, does anyone else have a question on this activity? It's June, June 18th, correct? June, June 18th. Yep, Friday, PM. June 18th. Okay. And just as a point of order, um, is, is it necessary that we do a vote? Is this a, some, a function of the local school council would need to approve the? Yes. yes. Uh, not a point of order. For internal, no. For external, yes. Okay. Okay. So internal meaning because this is a school, this is a school group that is doing this activity. Is that correct? Is that what you mean by internal? Yes. Okay. If it's a school group, it's internal. Yes. Okay. But they will have to report after the 10 days after the, uh, or at the next meeting, how much money they raised and what the money is being uh, funded, you know, what is it going towards? Okay. Are we allowed to uh, create a bucket and have that money set aside for next year's projects? Yes. Is that a question for me or for Mr. Asensio? Because he, he probably could answer that question. Yeah, it is. It, it, you, you can create a, a bucket. I remember in the few years that I've been there, I remember we have um, at least a hundred different organizations that have buckets created in a, in a special account in the building. And the business manager was very keen on putting everything in, 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 uh, in record. And once you needed the money out, you, she followed procedure with everything and your, the money was accessible almost immediately. So, uh, yes, you can, you can create a bucket and you can augment the book, the bucket as, uh, uh, as much as you can. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So do we need a motion for this or do we, we don't need to vote, isn't it? Yes, yeah. we'll need to approve it. Okay, so. No, I actually, will, no, you don't need to. No. We, don't, we don't need to. We don't need mm -hmm. to because it's internal. That's true. It's internal. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that because we always had issues with that in the past and now that you shed light into that subject now we know exactly what we have to do uh but in addition to that uh, i think that we need to uh thank mr uh, dr blake for putting up a wonderful showcase uh to celebrate the pride month of the lgbtq uh community this is the first time in our school history that we have a showcase place uh, in front of the, uh, the, the main office. We've had GSA in our school for at least 10 years. I was the second, uh, the, the first the first co-founder of, of that organization and we never came up with that idea because it wasn't, we didn't have as much support as we have now. Um, but it, it, thank you for putting, putting the, the amount of work and effort that you have uh, donated out of your own time you and Dr. Uh, Lopez uh, did a wonderful job. Thank you. Yes, I was just going to say thank you so much. I uh, it wouldn't be anything without Dr. Lopez. So yes. <laughs> yeah, and there was someone else that uh, mentioned an awesome display. So that's good. I I would just like to add that I'm impressed by 
the organization that one dollar for everything it seems to be very well laid out and i think that our children are really looking forward our youth are really looking forward to having a safe environment but have some kind of activity is there anyone else that would like to comment on um on the activity on the proposal even though we don't need to vote and the, the most wonderful thing is that i was riding the bus i think it was yesterday or the day before and I saw one of the members, I didn't know she was part of GSA, and I didn't ask her, but she was actually looking at the designs for the buttons. And it made me so proud to see how they have embraced the organization and how open our school has become. Uh, it's uh, It reminds me of how far we have gone in 50 years with having organizations that represent the community in the buildings and throughout the city. This is awesome, thank you. Yes, I, I second um, everyone's uh, feelings, and I really um, am just grateful to have um, hired and uh, have Dr. Blake in the house um, with his great ideas. And, and yes, I, uh, one of our students uh, even designed the, the logo, uh, which was awesome. And I think when we continue to create this safe environment, not only safe during the pandemic, but just overall safe environment for our students to feel comfortable to learn and to be themselves, um, where we can just focus on education, um, I think is gonna be key. And having people, the, the right people in our building um, is also gonna help us propel our students forward. So thank you again for your work. Yes. So okay, and thanks for all who contributed their comments. Um, I think this is kind of, getting us all excited really about this activity. So thank you all. Um, if we've finished that, we could move on to 6E, to the LSC member ideas and input. Um, I guess this was a time, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, in which any of us who are members um, would have the opportunity to comment or to raise any kind of question. Correct. Thank you. So, any comments, any ideas that we'd like to present at this point today? Um, I'd just like to give some um, context and some updates on our work with um, trying to uh, put all ideas on the table pertaining to future renovations to the school, uh, specifically our field outside and our locker room area. Um, I know that uh, uh, Ruth Cruz, our community member, has shown interest in wanting to help us in this area. Israel Floor is definitely from the onset of the, the idea, has uh, really latched on and wanting to support. We had actually a, a scheduled meeting with the alderman today at 5.30, which we needed to reschedule because we, we moved our LFC um, earlier in, in the month. But uh, the alderman is also committed to having a seat at the table um, in helping us brainstorm and come up with the best uh, path to um, get these renovations done. Um, but th that I just wanted to give an update of where we're at. The alderman is more than willing to help. Um, we're just trying to make sure that we can all align our schedules. And everybody here is obviously more than welcome. I I'll be letting you all know uh, more information of when we have a follow-up meeting with Alderman Cardona um, so we can continue this brainstorm and we can follow up other leads that will help us eventually get the renovate renovations that we desperately need in the building. Uh, but that's all that I have on that last update. Thank you, Mr. Escamilla. Um, and, and perhaps just to translate that very, very quickly is que the, Eh, el trabajo para seguir mirando las renovaciones y las mejor, los mejoramientos para, la, para el campo o la cancha que está afuera, eh, que se van a, a tener que poner de nuevo una fecha para um, la reunión con el alderman, señor Cardona, porque no se pudo realizar. Sin embargo, la señora Ruth Cruz y Israel Flores han estado apoyando y entonces hay avance. Um, anyone else have, a, have an idea or um, a comment, input that they would like to offer? 
Good evening, everyone. Uh, I don't have a, a, an idea. I just uh, want to, first of all, uh, welcome and, and say thanks to you, Mrs. Uh, Mary McCann, for stepping up and taking on the role of being our LSC chair. Uh, that's that's awesome. Um, we're excited. <laughs> uh, I've been on LSC for a while, and uh, it's been a kind of challenging the last maybe year and a half to two years trying to get uh, people who are committed and uh, looking forward to uh, assist with forming, uh, uh, moving forward and uh, interested in our students and great works and things that form. And so uh, I'm excited to work with each and every member of this LSC group. And uh, I look forward to the day when I can basically meet you face to face and not just uh, <laughs> virtually, but uh, just excited about our local school council and so glad that we have a quorum and things like that. So looking forward to working with each and every one of you. Thank you, Ms. Woods. So if there are no further ideas, we could move on to um, seven, which are the reports. Um, I, as the chairperson, I don't have a report today. <laughs> um, the principal, Mr. Escamilla, do you have a report? Yes, I do. I'm going to share my screen once again. Mm. Uh, this is not the, hold on, give me one second. <clears throat> so I just like to in keep the uh, LSC informed on some updates at the school. So um, in conjunction with our union organization here called the, the PPC, um, in conjunction with that team here that, that are not only union reps, but uh, teacher um, uh, teachers also make up that organization here at the school level. Um, we work to uh, come to a consensus and it wasn't too difficult um, it, because we've been fighting very hard for uh, an improved bell schedule. Um, before I arrived, the, the bell schedule uh, had a, a very late start time and a very late end time. Uh, thank you for your participation, Emily. Nice to see you. <clears throat> we had a, a late start time and a late um, exiting time, which created a bit of, of a problem for our after school programs and part getting participation in those. and. Um, uh, it, it's not that easy. We can't just snap our fingers and, and just uh, create a new bell schedule. There has to be a consensus at the school level. There has to be an interest of stakeholders. And, um, and then we have to make it work with central office and transportation, not only transportation, the yellow buses that help support transportation at the school level, but also transportation with CTA. Uh, so there's a lot of things that must align in order for us to uh, get bell schedules changed and approved. And so I, I was happy that after um, about a year and a half or so, we were able to uh, get um, what we were interested in, in, in getting, which was an earlier start time and, and an earlier release time of our students so they can actually participate in after school activities and still go home when there's still a little bit of light out uh, rather than going home um, in the evening hours or just not participating. So um, our, our staff voted for this particular bell schedule and moving forward into next year, we had to um, come to a, a consensus or an agreement again. And um, we all came to the agreement that with, with the idea of not really being able to take full advantage of our bell schedule because we weren't in person and things aren't back to quote unquote normal yet, um, you know, we want to give our bell schedule the opportunity to um, exist in a more normal setting. And just to give you a, a sense, our, here's our, our bell schedule, it's the same as this year's. 
Um, and an additional process that our teachers needed to um, come to an agreement with was uh, also a part of our bus bell schedule that creates these flex day opportunities. And um, the, the terminology is not too important, but it is referred to as flex days because what we end up doing is that the district gives us three professional development days um, where we meet two days at the beginning of the school year and one day at the end of the school year for professional development purposes. And, and the idea of flexing that time simply means that we divide those three days. Rather than meeting during those three days, we divide those three days into 12 different one and a half hour meeting dates or meeting times that we can uh, sprinkle throughout the entire school year so that we have more collaboration and more engagement throughout the entire school year rather than only two days at the very beginning and one day at the very end. Because if we, I mean, we can still be productive if we have that bell schedule where we have professional development all lumped together at the beginning and, and again at the end. But we feel that uh, having uh, flex days or having this flex day uh, schedule where we break up those days into these 12 different sessions gives us more of an opportunity to continue to stay in contact with one another, support our, our, our professional learning com uh, committees here, which are like our instructional leadership team, multi-tiered uh, multi system of support team and culture and climate, all of the teams that exist, it gives us more of uh, check-in opportunities throughout the entire school year. So again, Long story short is that we did come to a consensus to continue to move forward with our existing bell schedule so there will be no adjustments made there. Are there any questions with this? Okay. So I did also want to paint a, a, a brief picture, although this is not um, the, the end of our data, our school data. But... This was um, some of our school data that I presented last month. And then the bottom data here is, is data that we pulled about, uh, uh, about a week ago. Um, so roughly a month apart. Um, and it, what I want to point out is I'll first point out here this number of 835 and 95 point thirty three percent what does that mean so at the very top I guess it gets a little cut off but it, this is this represents grades for the ninth grade and so right now we have uh, a ninety five point thirty three percent pass rate in the freshman class so ninety five percent of our freshman class are all passing their their courses and on the left hand side you'll see a breakdown of the different subject areas. And this was a data that we had about a month ago. Uh, so again, uh, nine, at that time, 95.33% of our freshmen were passing. Um, and at that time, 72% of our sophomores were passing. Oops, I'm sorry about that. 79% um, <clears throat> of our juniors were passing and 79% of our seniors were passing about around that time. Well, we fast forward to a little less than a month, and um, our data still stays around the same, although we saw a little bit of a dip in our freshman data. We have 93% of our freshmen passing as of last week. Um, we saw a bit of a decrease in sophomores to 70.53% of our sophomores passing at the end of last, or as of last week. Um, we, we still stayed at 79% with our juniors, and we saw a rise in our senior uh, pass rates where we went from 79% to 85%. And so what this means is that people are, are, are kicking it into gear. Our students are trying to um, work hard and, and fast and turning in and completing their assignments to make sure that their uh, grades are being adjusted and um, being reflected on a weekly basis. Just as an FYI, our teachers uh, are provided with data even further broken down than this um, on a weekly basis where our where our teachers have access to um, 
their own data from their own classes uh, broken down at a, to a level where they can do some analysis themselves and, and try to figure out how to best support students and what assignments they need continued help with, whether they are missing uh, in-class assignments, homework, or assessments is their focus. They can support kids in that way. So our, our, our teachers are accustomed to receiving this data on a weekly basis so that in their departments and course teams, they continue to collaborate, discuss, and support. So this picture, I just wanted it to speak for itself uh, this Saturday. Um, and I'm not sure if she's still on the call, but this Saturday we have our our graduation, and I would like uh, if Ms. Zaki, our assistant principal, is still on the call, if she wouldn't mind just sharing a little bit of uh, brief information on um, the the setup of an organization of our graduation. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to share. Uh, good afternoon or good evening, everyone. So, uh, like Principal Escamilla was saying, we have graduation this Saturday. Um, we are hosting graduation here at Foreman in our field, and for social distancing reasons, we are having two ceremonies. One is at 10 a.m. for last names A through L, and the other is at 1 p.m. for last names M through Z. Uh, students, senior students, graduating students, will be uh, coming to the school on Thursday, and on Friday in preparation for graduation. So on Thursday, they'll be returning their Chromebooks and paying fees, picking up their caps and gowns. And on Friday, they'll be returning for a rehearsal where they'll practice lining up and alphabetical order, and they'll get their tickets. So each graduate, uh, for social distancing reasons, is getting two tickets to bring two guests with them to their ceremony, to the ceremony. Um, and what we are emphasizing to students and families right now is the importance of everyone arriving on time, wearing a mask, uh, completing the health screener before they arrive, and remaining seated for the ceremony that will take place so that we can manage our, our numbers and keep everyone safe. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Zaki. And um, yeah, Ms. Zaki has been integral in, in um, Putting, making the arrangements for our graduation. And we we just also recently did a, a very fun and decorative decision day event for our seniors, which was awesome. So we can thank you again, Ms. Eki and the senior team. Um, a lot of people commented on the way our auditorium was decorated for our seniors on decision day. And it was certainly a lot of fun um, just engaging with them, and I could tell that they've been really hung, uh, hungry for an event like that. So I also look forward to that fundraising event that we have with Dr. Blake. So again, thank you, Ms. Zaki, and thank you for that information. Um, any questions at this point? Okay, so uh, to uh, share with you all a little bit of um, uh, our preparation, our prep work for um, receiving students and welcoming students over the summer and into next school year I know how important and and, and we cannot we cannot let uh, social emotional learning just be brushed under the the rug and treat um, this summer and next year as a, another typical school year is just we cannot do that we can af we cannot afford to do that after coming back from the pandemic even though we are technically uh, we were technically, as a school district, open to receiving students uh, right now for in-person teaching and learning. It's still not at its normal state. Um, and in anticipation of needed support, uh, of social-emotional support, social-emotional learning, we've been um, trying to make sure that we, one, that we can continue to engage our students through the summer. So we, we wanted and advocated for our sophomore, our freshman and sophomore uh, connection and what um, that entails is providing an opportunity for our freshman and sophomore and so these are in these are eighth graders that are moving up rising eighth graders that are rising to their their first year at high school and our current freshmen who are becoming sophomores next year <clears throat> since they did not have that actual opportunity to spend um, more time with us in the building 
the district is working with us in providing um, and funding for a, a freshman and sophomore connection. And what we do is provide them access, uh, provide our students with access to English and math curriculum. So there will be continued academic learning taking place. And I know people like Mr. Asensio have, have in the past helped us with uh, freshman connection. So um, they can comment or share or give some additional insight. But they do get exposed to academic curriculum. But more so, they're looking for us at the school level to come up with ideas for enrichment uh, of our students and continuing to have them engaged in the building. So we, uh, I'll, Ms. Zaki again, uh, organized a brainstorm with our inviting our entire staff to share and give input on what this may look like aside from our English and math curriculum. And we got a lot of great ideas um, from a leadership development to exposure to our, our to band practice, like a summer band camp. Um, our athletic director is um, opening up clinics for elementary school students to engage and, and sort of to create that pipeline of, of friendship and networking with our elementary feeder schools, but also engaging our freshmen and sophomore students to participate in those athletic clinics. So we have, you know, art, uh, um, physical education, we have uh, leadership uh, development programs, uh, ready to launch for the summer so that we can continue to support our students with this uh, sort of well-rounded social emotional learning that, that really needs to take place. I've also been working um, closely uh, in, in speaking with our clinicians here, our psychologists, our social workers in our need of uh, what they call tier two interventions. And tier two interventions are, are ways that adults, especially uh, licensed clinicians can help students outside of the classroom. So tier, when we say tier one, those are usually, usually those are supports that take place inside the classrooms by teachers and their curriculum. And when we talk about tier two and tier three, those, those tend to happen outside of the classroom. And so we're trying to create a schedule with our clinicians to offer um, social emotional learning groups throughout the school year. Now, um, our clinicians are accustomed to doing this type of work where they may help one or two or three students in a small group with, let's say, for example, anxiety. But they wouldn't advertise in a school, or especially in a high school, hey, do you want to join the, join the anxiety club or get anxiety help? It wouldn't be like that. They would, they would uh, you know, spin it where it's more about a, a positive advertisement, like, hey, do, do, you, do you want to uh, join a leadership um, group that meets during lunch periods? And these are the things that we're gonna practice in this leadership group. And, and, um, and, and so we would create these groups to help us to get students participating in social emotional learning, um, sort of it, um, in these groups that are, are created for them that, uh, create an interest in, in, in the, the teenage brain to uh, participate um, in social emotional learning throughout the school year. So I'm excited about that and working close with our clinicians and they, I, I know that they're excited as well to offer things like that as well. We will still continue to offer um, uh, and partner with organizations like Becoming a Man, like BAM. They create cohorts of students and provide um, uh, leadership activities, social emotional learning throughout the school year as well. So that will not end. We also um, are continuing our interview process for a librarian for next school year. Um, this librarian position again, as I mentioned in our budget conversation last time, um, is a centrally funded position uh, provided to us by CPS. And uh, the difference is it's not just your general typical uh, sense of what a librarian is and does. This librarian not only will help us manage our, our library, but also uh, uh, give us a focus on restorative justice practices. They will emphasize a focus on restorative justice practices. And you may be thinking like, well, how does a librarian do that? How do we mix the librarian's duties and restorative justice practices? Well, when I saw this and I saw this being offered and I immediately jumped on it and then was fortunate enough to hear that we did get the centrally funded librarian position, uh, I was happy because um, 
even the, the second I got here and we started to put in a lot of foundational um, systems in place, <clears throat> um, we started to brainstorm, me and the deans at the time, our, our culture and climate interventionist at the time, our culture and climate interventionist this year is Dr. Lopez. She's a tremendous help. So we're going to continue to brainstorm this idea as well. But we're trying to come up with alternatives to in-school suspension, out-of-school suspension, and your traditional idea of a detention. So I'm trying to get away from this, these punitive um, actions uh, because, it, it quite quite frankly, it doesn't sit right with me and, and my um, pedagogy of education. I refuse to um, uh, bring students into this building and then just um, uh, herd them into a room where they're not allowed to communicate with each other and just like face forward and um, not really engage with anybody and sit in an in-school suspension room. That I think is does not uh, create the, the culture that we're trying to create here of learners and, and, a, and create a college going culture. That's just not correct. So we're trying to think of alternatives. We've all probably have experienced detentions um, at some point in our in our history as, as students. Um, and so there is um, research of its impact, but only if done correctly. So we're going to, uh, what we've been doing thus far in the last couple of years is we put our own spin to detentions and we call our detentions reflections because for the most part, that's what they are, that we bring students uh, in with an adult, specifically our culture and climate interventionists, and they reflect on their infraction or they reflect on their behavior so that they won't repeat it again in the future. And that, that counts as a detention served. And so um, early on, we began to talk about how can we utilize the library as a space where we can um, where we can uh, reward students for doing the right thing. So if a student goes in for tutoring, if a student go, um, leaves the cafeteria during lunch period and goes to the library to study, or if the student goes to the library for um, uh, what we used to call lunchtime chats, we haven't had those because we haven't had too many students take advantage of in-person learning, but we used to run something called lunch, lunchtime chats where it would be a small group of students that would discuss a, a, a particular topic of interest and hopefully make a, a, a more of a positive impact at the school. And if they just entered into a conversation with one another, and there would be the culture and climate interventionist will help guide the conversation. If they participate in that, they get two reflections served. Um, and so we think that we can create a, a working system for tutoring and support our students for restorative justice practices all at the same time out of our library and so we again look forward to the support of our librarian in, in that respect so i just wanted to emphasize um, how we're moving forward not forgetting about social emotional learning that is just a must that we need to interweave throughout our practices not only this summer but into next school year um, I am done with my report. I don't know if anyone has any questions on or any new ideas that th have been sparked with um, some of the things that I've been sharing, but you are free to go ahead and unmute and ask me any questions. I, I just wanted to comment that I think it's excellent that the sophomores get their their time for the, you know, the onboarding. That sounds wonderful that they have that opportunity with the freshmen. Yeah, yeah, and, it's, and because, you know, they they missed out on that, that portion of um, freshman connection when it was their turn, and it's just right for us to carve out that time and space for them as well. And by the way, I take that back. I do, you, you also do have the documents um, that are attached to, um, our calendar invite for our current state of our internal accounts and um, a budget transfer that I um, also attached that I also need your approval on. And again, to give you some background, <clears throat> um, the budget transfers um, need LSE approval because they live, th these monies live in certain lines 
And so when there becomes a need where I need to pay someone or, uh, or make a purchase, uh, in this case, there's one example there uh, where um, there was a request from counseling services to purchase certain materials for them. Um, I had to move money from a particular line in our internal accounts in order to move it to a, a counseling materials line where I can then purchase stuff for our counselors. Um, but whenever I move money from one area to another, I have to show why and I have to show all of you. I also get the approval from um, the network chief, which is um, my direct supervisor above me. And that's Dr. Laura Lamone, who also you, you, you'll see that she has already reviewed that and, and signed off on that transfer. I still, um, it's still part of the practice to come and bring this and show this to all of you to get your um, approval. And I would need someone to motion for the approval and simply um, uh, approve the, the transfer that took place. I motion the approval of the budget transfer. <clears throat> I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, that's that's gonna. Uh, oh. Okay, so we have, so that has passed, correct? Um, one, two, three, four, five, five, six, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I believe it did. Eight, eight votes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so with that, Mr. Escamilla, is your report um, completed? Yes. Okay, so we would move to the student representative. Thank you, Ms. McCann. Uh, so I did wrap things up uh, last LSC meeting by showing you all the results of a reflection of this year um, from a survey. And the student voice committee and I have basically concluded our year. Dr. Lopez has been sending out emails to the student body and staff um, regarding our virtual Pride Week and Comfort Closet event that the uh, SVC planned. So I do want to say I enjoyed working with you all and I definitely look forward to next school year and hopefully seeing you all in person. <laughs> thank you. Okay. And thank you very much for all your hard work on, as the representative. Um, thank you. And then we'll move on to the Bilingual Advisory Committee, the back. I believe that is Misaki. Okay, Misaki, do you have a report for the back? Oops, you're muted. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I can report for the back, no problem. So the BAC had its final meeting of the year uh, earlier this last month and um, has been working closely with the PAC to arrange for some English language classes for our parent communities. So we were able to secure uh, English language classes, 15 one-hour workshops uh, for our parents per their request um, that will begin over the summer. Right now, we're really focusing our next BAC meeting, which I'm sorry, not BAC meeting, our next PAC meeting on um, arranging times and days for those sessions. Okay, thank you. Um, and who will be reporting for the PAC, for the Parent Advisory Committee? Point of order, Ms. McCann. Uh, yes. Ms. Uh, Misaki, did they approve the monies to buy the computers for the parents uh, official for the back? 
Uh, for the computers, I would have to check on that, but I did find out uh, yesterday that the um, English language classes have been approved. Ha has not been or has, oh, has been, okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Ms. McCann. Okay, any other? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, Ms. Zaki, I don't know if you worked out any details with Mr. Stahoviak, uh, if he needed anything additional shared pertaining to PAC? Uh, not that I know of, no. And there have been no requests from communications or FOIA for, for um, any materials, but again, if they are requested, we have all of our videos, agendas, and minutes um, linked to our website, um, just as an FYI. Okay. Thank you. And then passing to Professional Personal Leadership Committee, the PPLC. That's me. Um, we, uh, we haven't had a meeting since the last one that we um uh, agreed upon uh becoming the uh part of the commission to elect the principal um we are waiting for the results of um the mtss and the uh, uh, administration uh surveys that they have sent out for making sure that we uh, uh that there was there were some surveys individual teachers and department uh, department uh, surveys in which we were we were asking pertinent questions to MTSS and how to implement and how to improve what we have also we also um, uh, discussed uh, uh, we we're also waiting for the discussion on the um, uh, grading scale and uh, how we are going to um, critique the grading scale and how to improve it and uh, implement it for next school year that is something that we're waiting for the work of uh, the people in charge, uh, Mr. Sahoviak and uh, Ms. Malhas, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Ms. Tracy is also working on it um, to dissect the information so that we have a complete idea of what is at stake here. And uh, once that is ready, and I believe uh, it will be ready by next Wednesday, perhaps, uh, I know that because they're working diligently to uh, expedite this process. Once we have that report uh, presented or ready to to, um, to be presented, I'm going to call a meeting for the PPLC for the revision of the results and uh, to make recommendations on that matter. And the meeting will take place before the end of the school year, of course. That's all we have uh, for today. Okay, thank you very much. Um, moving forward, um, I see that public participation, uh, um, the rules so that it would be limited to two minutes, eight participants. I, I don't know how to access actually to see if anybody has requested that. Could someone help me out with that? Sure, I can, I can, um, I can give in the future, I can make sure you have access to that. Uh, link so you can see um, but we do have one more person for public participation if she's still on the line dr lopez who wanted to un, uh, make an announcement pertaining to an initiative that we have running at the school level dr lopez are you still on i'm still here um which of our wonderful initiatives <laughs> the the comfort closet you were saying you wanted to mention Okay, so this Friday, the Student Voice Committee, we've already conducted one session of a comfort closet distribution. Our comfort closet is uh, donations people provide of clothing, hygiene products, non-perishable food items, things like that, and we distribute to the community. We did one in May and we decided to do one more before the school year is out because we still have quite a bit of stuff to donate. Um, so this Friday on the 11th, right after school, pretty much at about 3.30, we're going to be doing this kind of setting up tables outside, and it is free. People can just come and grab items that they would like to have for themselves, their family. At our last event, we had about a good four families, um, and I mean large-sized families, <laughs> come out and grab items for themselves that were in need. So we even have baby products. Um, so some of the families uh, had small children. 
things like that. So it was very, it was very um, helpful. Uh, Christina Manuel and Lisa Canongo, two of our students, were some of the biggest um, helpers that day um, for that distribution. So we're going back at it again this Friday. Good. Well, thank you. So, um, yeah, so that date is coming up June 11th, I believe, correct? Yes, on, on June 11th, this Friday. Okay, great. Thank you. So there's no other public participation? No, that's it. Okay, so at at this point, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I move that the LSC meeting for the day uh, of uh, June the 8th uh, is uh, concluded. A second. So, and they're all in favor, say aye, please. Or aye. 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 Okay, it looks like we're ready to adjourn then. Thank you so much. Stay cool tonight. Yeah, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Chairperson McCann, it, it has a, a nice ring to it, and you did an awesome, smooth job uh, yes. for your first time and your first go round. So thank you not only for your service and dedication to our LSC, but your volunteership in, in this position. And like I mentioned to you over the phone, you have my support and anything that you need help with pertaining to the agendas, we'll touch base. So um, I can continue to support you in any that you may need, but thank you so much. No, I'm very happy. And again, I apologize for my work emergency and um, we'll see each other on our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, guidance, everyone. Good night. Mm -hmm.